homeschoolers, it's me Jazz again from Hidden Library Homeschool and I'm back with another curriculum video. In this video I'm going to show you what all three of my boys will be using for math for the 2017-2018 school year. And I'm going to show you all of my boys in this video because we don't switch it up too much for math. We've used Right Start Math from the very beginning. Since my oldest son Tony was about three and a half years old we started out with Right Start Math A and that was the first edition because at the time that was the only edition that was available. And once the second edition became available and I was able to look at the samples, we ended up switching when we went into math um, level B with him to the second edition. And that was really only because of the teacher's manual. The second edition, at least from my perspective, is laid out so much clearer and cleaner and was a lot easier on my eyes. And because Right Start is such a teacher intensive program, that was important to me to be able to have a teacher's manual that I could look at and was very, very easy to follow. So for Clark, my middle son, who will be five and going into kindergarten, we have Right Start Math A, and this is of course the second edition. And I, I don't have the first edition on hand to show you to compare or anything like that because we did sell that off after I was done with that one. And this one is laid out, I'm not even sure if I showed this in a video before or not, but this, um, is laid out very clearly. It has your objectives, your materials, activities for teaching, and it has it all you know shown what you're going to do and say, and then any explanations here why you're teaching what you're teaching, and there's plenty of room over here for any notes that you want to take on these lessons. So usually, like I've said before, in the note taking area, I will write any brain pump videos that go along with what we're doing, but we don't always have a video for it because there's so many games in this program that we don't always have a video to watch. It's usually just so much better to play all of the games. Like it says right here, there's a game that you're playing after this lesson. And instead of it being so worksheet heavy, there's lots of games that you're doing for your practice. And the games that you're playing are using a lot of these manipulatives that, I'm trying to get out of the glare, that uh, come in this set. I purchased this set when my oldest son was, um, when he first started the program, when we first started, when he was about three and a half years old. And at that time, it was a big investment. It is a lot of money. I'm, I, you know, I'll admit that. But we do use a lot of these manipulatives year after year. I'm still using them with Tony. I'm able to use them now with my younger sons. So to me, it was worth it to buy all of these because we're using them just in different ways in different years. It came also with these appendix pages. And the appendix pages are pretty similar to the ones that came with the first edition. So I don't think that I'm going to be using these because a lot of these pages here, when I had, when I did this with, um, here's a calendar one, when I did this with Tony, I cut these out and laminated them. So since it's already, you know, the work's done for me, then I just, I don't really want to take the time to cut them out again. But should we lose a piece, we have more that came with um, Clark's second edition. It also came with a workbook and this is the kindergarten book so it's not very thick It's one of the main reasons why I picked Write Start is because there's not a lot of writing early on and I don't really stress writing in kindergarten. We do a little bit of writing here and there but I don't make it a point of um, him really learning how to write and what, write words and things like that until the summer after kindergarten. So while there is some um, I can find some there is some writing practice in this book if you want to do any um, learning how to write any of the numbers we do skip this part but when it comes to parts like this where it has problems you can easily get away with not writing here if your kid isn't ready for writing or if you don't emphasize writing in kindergarten say for example the answer is five they could of course orally say five put up their hand for five use many one of the many minutes ah, <laughs> saying that word over and over again gets you tongue-tied <laughs> using one um say the tally sticks or things like that in order to show the number five so there's um, a lot of ways to get around not writing within this book but they do say that you should only be using one book per student. So even though we don't write too much in this, I don't use this with another student. So I did get a second workbook for um, Bruce. Should he be ready for math, I'm prepared for him to start or join with us. If he's ready, I have a second workbook for him. So I don't really add, like I said, too many things to Write Start because I do think it's a solid program and um, works very well with my children. But one thing I did add was kind of a splurge. It was only about $3 though. <laughs> I did buy the McRuffy cards and this is um, Build It card set one. 
and there's just different things that they're building with here and they're using these um, little blocks here to make those and I'm glad I bought this because my older son was kind of stuck on a topic that was a little bit like this in his CTC math program and I think I'm gonna have him play around with these this week and then maybe go over that uh, that assignment again at the end of the week so my son Clark will be using CTC math sporadically. We'll, we'll just be focusing more on right start math, but we do like CTC math because it's on the computer. He's done a couple lessons here and there in pre-K, so we'll just continue on with them. And that's an Australian program, but they do have a American version of the program, which is really just, you know, the currency pretty much because that's what's different. But all the other math is, you know, the same, you know, two plus two is, for in every country so <laughs> you don't really have to change any of that up but he does like doing that and just having you know the computer show him something and it's only about five minutes of a lesson and then he answers a couple of questions there I did pick up two math books for him and we have read these already one time but I'm sure we'll be reading these over and over again throughout the school year so I have one and then I also have zero and these books, while they are math books, they also are um, kind of character books and um, um, anti-bullying and things like that in the book too. So Zero is about more self-esteem. Zero, he is, I'm gonna move back so you can see this. Zero, he's feeling down because he's not worth what the other numbers are worth. He doesn't feel like he's, you know, uh, good enough. But then he realizes that once you start getting into numbers, um, like 10 he starts really counting and then of course once you get higher and higher he counts more and more and more and it really sees that he's worth something even though he's small of a number um, a very small number and then for one it's a kind of an anti-bullying book so it starts out showing about the colors blue is oops I can open this Blue is very sad because red is picking on him. And then all of the other colors kind of come and to his defense. And then they end up turning, let me see. They end up turning into numbers. And then they realize by the end of the story that it only takes one in order to stand up to a bully. So while you're doing math concepts in this book, there is also a little bit of character education tied into the book. For my older son, Clark, I mean, for my older son, Tony, he will be doing um, the third grade level of Right Start, and that is Right Start level D. And we have a little bit more of C to finish up this summer, so hopefully we'll be finished with that before the beginning of the school year. If not, it might spill into third grade a little bit, but we should still be able to finish level D within third grade. And this is, of course, the second edition, and it's laid out just the same as, um, I showed you with A, all of the objectives, materials, activities for teaching, explanations laid out just the same. So very easy to follow. If you've been doing this program for years, then it's, you know, pretty open and um, easy to understand. Once you open the book up, it's easy, very easy to understand. And that also came with appendix pages, not as many as, um, not as many as came, that came with uh, the level A, but there are a couple in there. And it came with, of course, a workbook. And as you can see, this workbook for third grade is a lot thicker in comparison to the one that I have for my kindergartner, because by then they should be able to write a little bit more. But even though there are more, um, it is thicker and there are more worksheets, they aren't having the kids do 100 problems of the same concept over and over again and you know really drilling it into them to a point of it being boring there is still there's enough for them to for you to know that they've gotten the concept and and for them to get practice in but not too much that it becomes too much work for the children so here is that book so we'll be continuing on with that and he will also be doing ctc math last year in um second grade i had him do the daily math practice in the beginning of the year and that i don't i don't think it worked out well because it was another thing on paper and i think that's why ctc math another reason why it works so much better with us 
And while it can be used as a complete curriculum, it says for the younger elementary ages, we do use it as more of just kind of our morning math and to you know get your brain going. The kids like it. Like I said before, they're really short videos, about five minutes or so, and then he does the questions afterwards. And he likes having the automatic feedback, whether he gets the answer right or wrong. And I also get an email sent to me uh, by, at the end of the week all of the lessons that he's done and I can check that over. Of course I can, you know, log on and check it myself, but it is nice to have the email at the end of the week and see all throughout the week what he's done. And he gets certificates for all of the concepts that he's finished, say it's, you know, a chunk of addition ones and they break that up and then by the time he's done, then he gets a certificate for that. And I am able to set for both of my kids what I want their past grade to be. So for my oldest son, who is eight and going to third grade, his pass, I set it for 90% because I know he's good at math and I know that he can do that. So, and my youngest, my younger son who is five and going into kindergarten, I set his for 80% because I do want him to understand the topics before he moves on, but I don't want it to be as um, much that he has to get through before uh, he can move on to another concept like his older brother. And I didn't add too much in the way of other, you know, worksheets and things like that, but I did pick up a couple of math books. I have If, and this book is just um, showing bigger concepts and bringing them down to something that you can kind of see or touch more. So let me find a good one. So it's talking about your life in the size of a pizza. It talks about... Um, See. It talks about inventions of the last a thousand years and they put it on a ruler and different things like that. They're talking about lifespan, they talk about um, the history of earth and things like that. So I think he'll like this book and we'll probably do this one of our little during one of our breaks in between because it doesn't really tie in too well with you know just regular math and multiplication and things like that but it is a good uh, kind of thing to, for him to just see, have a concept of how big things are. I also have from the You Wouldn't Want to Be series, You Wouldn't Want to Live Without Math. I have You Wouldn't Want to Live Without Clocks and Calendars, and also You Wouldn't Want to Live Without Money. So we'll find a time to do those between the school year. I wanted to get books because um, there's always a time that while even if a program is working, there's always a time when you feel like you need to switch it up a little bit. So I thought that these would be a good thing once we start to get to the point where we want a little bit of a change. I already have things on hand that we can do. And then the last book I have for math is Math Quest, The Planet of Puzzles. And it took me a little bit of time to get the kind of the feel of this book because when I got this book, it shows that they're on a mission and the kids, it tells them that they're going to have all different problems that they're gonna to have to solve. And it's gonna send you back and forth, back and forth between the books. So if you get one answer, you go to this page. You get another answer, you go to that page. And if you end up on the wrong page, it tells you, well, you probably did this wrong. So go back, try it again, and then you, it'll show you what you need to do. So you're going back and forth, back and forth between the book and solving all these problems to fix different things on um, in your space mission. So I think he's going to like this. I'm not sure where, when exactly within um, school we'll do this, maybe during our kind of space between the two semesters, but I think that he will enjoy this book. And there are other books in the series. It has um, Mansion of Mazes, The Cavern of Clues, and The M Museum of Mysteries. So if he does like this book, we'll probably do another book maybe in the series, maybe in the summer or if we have time during the school year. So that is all of the books that I have for my sons, all three of them, my third grader, my kindergartner, and also my son for pre-K who may come into the, but I'm not sure uh, just yet. Depending on how ready he is, we may add him into the mix of our math curriculum somewhere. But those are all the books that we have for next year for our 2017-2018 school year. Thanks for checking this video out from Hidden Library Homeschool. Please like, comment, and subscribe below. Bye.